Hello, good day. Welcome to Far Aquatics. We are talking about the hybridization of the Hillary fish and we are going in steps. So the steps are generally go from the initial Hillary to then working on the anal or dorsal fins and then from there getting the split tails and getting the body shape and the coloring you would like. So beginning that process will generally be the first step. And you will consider this one the first step. The first step is the basic hillary, the great sword tail like this here. So this will be our first step. Hope, you hope the camera is focusing all right. The second step will be looking forward now to the pronounced dorsal fin like here. You will see the beginning in his genetics of the split tails, which will be on top of there, but it's not pronounced, so you generally use him in a breeding project to get the third step now. The third step would be here, which would be, okay, not him. You just want the longer finish. Okay, so here. So the longer finish is here. So first step, this will be a first step. General Hillary. Second step, the pronounced dorsal fin. Then third step would be him here, which will be getting these double fins and then this sharp fin here it end up also with a longer inner duct well inner fin not duct sorry um the fourth step will generally be oh, almost like an alpha which will be like him here sorry for the dogs barking there's a large alpha fin then two longer pronounced dorsal fin and a very long inner fin so this i would consider him a great breeder so we could bypass all of these and just do with him but i generally like each of them as their own variant so first step second step third step and fourth step would be the own variant of a fish and johnny they would say like okay if you look at his you know fin here they would say these are generally not good for breeding and they mutilate part of it to get them to breed but my process to avoid such a thing would be to breed with the jumbo females so I generally take the, the attributes of the fish, all of these things, to see it earlier in their lifetime. Before reaching the mating age, you would want to breed a jumbo, like this. So this is a one jumbo female here, and another jumbo female over there. Pull those from my pond. And being that these generally, well, some of these will generally have a longer mating duct and incapable to breed you use a larger fish. Generally they would say, okay, it can't anymore and they cut it and make it capable, but generally they don't want to put a scissors to anything and cut it. Cut it out. If I were incapable, I'd want to cut it. So yeah. You'll use these in a the project, I'm using these in project, sorry for the angle there. Eh? Using these two in a the project. For cleanup, I generally like to use Amplorade golden apple snails. Like these here. They're really nice, really nice. So, you can look at them. They will eat dead plants, dead carcasses. They wouldn't eat the live plants. That's why I like them so much. Um, also, for the fry, I'll be feeding them infusoria for my cultures, which is generally from boiling them, throwing the water away from boiling them, then placing some tank water with general bacteria that lives in the tank. And... They will make microscopic worms. Uh, not so sure you might be able to see the worms right now, but a lot of the specks in there and the little strings. Okay, you can see a string right there. All of those are generally worms. Okay, you can see it moving around slightly there. Um, separate from those, uh, generally, I'm bring the bucket closer to me. I generally use foxtail mixed with other type of aquatic plants. So this one here, fluffy, will be the foxtail. I'll put a point in stick down a little bit and then okay let me see if i have any in this bucket in particular okay yes i do then there's this type i can't remember the name it's somewhat of a water time but they have natural microscopic somewhat like a shrimp or flea you would call it and you put it in the tank when breeding so they have room to get away places to hide and meet and also so I'm going to put the fry to eat from while hiding. So 
they wouldn't stop. It's easy to propagate also, it's generally like you take a length of it and you just break it in half and boom, that's going on its own, it's going on its own. It's a great thing also for breeding goldfish and koi, but I like it in almost all my setups. I better have it in a tetra setup. Um, these blocks here, this is a male. It may look like a female, but it's actually a male. It's actually like a second step of one of these. That I could use a black molly to cross and pronounce this in it. So I really like how it almost falls down on it. And then I have a shower, which I also bred by taking a platy, uh, and lagopi, and a hillary. And you're trying to break out these colors. You're generally end up with a light color. So let me see if I have a light color in here. Okay. So this is not the same type, but this is the type of light color you'll get. Let's know. It's light color here. And you'll take one of these now and bring it back with one of these. Maybe two to three generations down until you get a shower. I have mixed showers, but they're my ponds right now. And okay, so there's an example of a lighter shower here, which is using. Uh, where you went? Which will be using one like this. One like him here. That one. Yeah. In my setup I'm doing for them, I'm using some water from the pond, so it wouldn't be looking the clearest. But I'm using this water. And well I have some Palasoneria gigantia, some wisteria, some aquarium grass. In this setup, with some salt plant. Okay, my watch name of this one no, is an Amazon plant. And we, okay, then some water time, a piece of foxtail. I'll be flooding here generally like this. No need to break it up, I have enough. But if you was you, I'd advise breaking it up. Flood some here, flood some there. Not much keep and really needed. You just want them to be able to hide in peace. The leaf here will be Indian almond leaf. This releases tannoids in the water. It drops acidity somewhat. It also gives natural organisms that live on the leaf come out in the water for them to eat. So that's another source of food for the fry. Because according to the size of the fry's mouth, they can choke on different sizes of food. So they want the option to have food from here, which would be sure more like for, what would I say? A week old fry, two week old fry, two month old fry. What will come off of these would be for now hatched. Not not to say that and food on these for now hatch will be the babies of the other aquatic organisms living on these, but it's just something to keep in mind if you want to do something more delicate like angel fry or fighter fry. And you'll be placing them in here. So I'll be using for this breeding setup. Where I place this stick? Okay, how many stick right now? I'll take a tweezer. So I'll be taking this you can see me pointing at him he is a fourth step i call him a third step but when i bring him back with a jumbo i will get a fourth step because all of his attributes will be enlarged from these fish while the ducks we try to bring back down the ducks even though we can work it around with breeding with a jumbo you would like it to become easier so you know jumbo and then the stages. You generally want to do these stages with a normal size. Yes, you'll be reading the jumbo to get the colors and everything that's pronounced easier. But once you get particular things from it, you want to keep it out of the breeding cycle for a while, the jumbo females. Because you don't want the problem to be overextended. Because, okay, if you had something like this now, in a jumbo, what would you breed it with, literally? He is closer to normal size, so I can take the chance and breed him with a jumbo. But if it was this size now with those same things, we would come back to the steam initial problem where we would have to mutilate part of that there. That white part there, that's what have to mutilate. And I really do not want to. Really do not want to. But that's generally the whole process of it. Um, the name of the business, as I said, Far Aquatics, you can find me on Instagram at too far. That is T O O underscore FA, which is P H A R, short for Pharaoh, if it's easier to understand in that such way. Um, with these colored ones, I'll contemplate doing a breeding setup for these. The 
tinier ones and putting them in some grouts because I generally have colored ones in ponds. But these I want to look at and see what they will happen next, next few months. The Amperade will be placing in it. By the way, the Amperade are actually great personal type snails. One thing I would say is they like actual fish food unlike black snails. But black snails generally eat your live plants. That's why I don't like to use them in all setups. But these snails are great. They're great to look at on their own. They're great for a small tank. You can put them in a terrarium. They, they, really, they really work around. The only thing you may not like, I think I could walk outside and show that part. This is where I pull them from. I generally have them in ponds, but this is like a holding tank. All of these plants in foxtail wise were in here. So that's white green and then the sunlight hitting it and creating the algae, which I use the algae to feed my pleco in there. These are more like to clean up extra food. Yeah, they have, I'm feeding them intentionally, but they work around. This is more like a shine out tank, as in the color top and down, so the pull up and the pond and everything else. So, I was getting to the Amperade golden upper snails. They lay eggs like this. The black snails lay, lay eggs in gels, like in the water, but the Amperade golden snails they look for somewhere out of water to do this. I'm going to have to take this and put this to hatch somewhere where they can fall into water because the ground is a bad idea. But, just letting you know that. If you don't like these things in your tank, <laughs> you're gonna have them. Once they're ready to breed, they're gonna have them. I remember their snails. So they're asexual, so they don't have to have a mate generally to do this. You can just do it. These things looking gross are like my cups and stuff. I wonder if I have any plants inside of this right now. Okay, now nah, I'm thinking. But yeah, I use these things so like if I'm taking out food from any cup to replant or anything like this, what I need in the tank is the same thing. So, yeah. Generally, you know, like having plants, they help with the whole setup, they help with the nitrate, nitrate to nitrate cycle, they oxidize the water, although some other plants like these, yeah, remember, it's a general, they still be like, considered like a general plant, so oxygen in the day, carbon in the night, if it's carbon, then it will work for like other plants, which will be like for these, which will be given oxygen generally, and these will be absorbing the carbon dioxide from this. So yeah, don't look around it as an ecosystem or type way more than just simply pump. I know you see me with no pumps running in them right now, but I actually have pumps for them. But the plants generally do the job, so it works out for me.